On Wednesday, for our devotional, we looked at Matthew 19, 27 through 30, and we looked at verse 30 specifically, that, that the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. But we skipped over, really, verse 27. And that's where Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? That's a good question. What then will we have? But I, I submit a different question. What do we really have? What really do we have in this life? One day around 1932, Tillett S. Tedley was able to visit his old home place uh, where he'd lived as a child. And in his memory, the place was brand new in his mind. He could see exactly how that home place was. But when he went to visit, you know, see, it, it was uh, Brother Tedley lived to be 102 years old. I'm not sure how old he was when he went back to his home place where he was born and raised. But you can imagine as time had gone on, that memory was something that was simply a memory. Because as he arrived to the home place, he noticed that the, the, the trees that he used to play on were dead or gone. He noticed that the, the house was absolutely just derelict. It had been destroyed. The barn was actually ransacked and it was, it was fading away, about to fall over. And what was interesting says that he sat on the ground and he leaned against a tree. He took out his pocket-sized Bible and he turned to a blank page in the back. And there he wrote the words, Earth holds no treasures but perish with using, however precious they be. Yet there's a country to which I am going. Heaven holds all to me. The hymn that we just sang, Heaven Holds All to Me. It has motivated many thousands of worshipers since then, since he penned those words in 1932. And I love that he penned them on the back of his Bible. And if you'll open your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians 4, and verse 7 beginning, we'll find the Apostle Paul saw treasure in the earth. He said that, uh, Brother Tedley said that earth holds no treasure, but perish with using. But in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So he saw the treasure in a jar of clay in an example. That a jar of clay was a treasure, and it would be a jar of clay that had not been cast yet, because he goes on and uses the example to say that we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. The only jar of clay that could be afflicted in every way would be like the pot, by the potter, and it was being pressed and molded and shaped into the pot of treasure that, that the, the, the potter chose so he's saying, we're afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed, manifested in our bodies. So the life of Jesus is really the treasure to be revealed in our mortal bodies. And we are compared to that, that earthen vessel. God chose us as his own special people. He chose us to be that treasure, to realize that we can be hard-pressed on every side, and only through Christ will we not be broken. We can be, we can be <clears throat> afflicted in every way, but not crushed, driven to despair and perplexed, persecuted but not, sorry, but not driven to despair. But we can also be persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. If you look at verse 11, he says, For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you, Paul is telling the Corinthians. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. 
For it is all for your sake, so that his grace extends to more and more people. It may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So as more and more people have the grace of God extended to them, there's more and more treasures like that earthen vessel. There's more and more earthen vessels to represent the body of Christ. He says, verse 16, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. They're temporary. Things that are unseen are eternal. Chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I think what Brother Tillett S. Tedley noticed is that that his earthly home, that he had all of those memories concerning, that, that was that childhood uh, just oasis. It was simply in his mind. Because as he came to it later, he realized that, that this earth holds no treasures, but it perishes with using. However precious they used to be. He's saying this, heaven holds all to me. My question for you tonight is, does heaven hold all for you? We have an invitation that we're, we're offering tonight to make sure that what I, I think that, that what this song has done, what this devotional has done, is to help take the concepts of this life, maybe even the struggles of this life, and help us to put them in perspective. That the unseen is always over the seen, and the eternal is always over the temporal we live for something that is not temporary, for something that will never waste away. Have you been living for Christ this evening? If we can encourage you in any way, pray that you'll respond now. While together we stand and while we sing.